In this video, I'll be discussing best practices when it comes to isolating or deleting elements of an SVG file, as well as reorganizing elements in case you need to cut out a project but only have 8.5 by 11 paper, along with some other tips. Now, the first thing I want to share with you is just a quick little tidbit here. Um, for those of you that use Dreaming Tree files, I have a zip file from the Dreaming Tree website here. Uh, and it's just a folder. This is not inside of Shortcuts A Lot. It's actually just from my desktop. And in Shortcuts A Lot, if you click on Window and open up your library, which you can do under Window and Library, you can also click on it here. Uh, library is your little personal place where you can organize your content. Okay. So let me show you real quick one little cool feature that you can do in shortcuts a lot with dreaming tree files this does not apply to this does not apply to other files from other companies we actually worked with the developer on this um, you can take a zip file click and drag it onto your mat and when you do that you'll notice here there's a 3dsvg.com folder that's created and then that bundle gets automatically added to your library here in Shortcuts a lot, which is cool because then you can actually see everything that's in there. You can zoom in on the icons a little bit, and then you can simply click just once to bring in a file. Okay, so that's helpful. And this is a great example for those of you that want to make this but don't have 12 by 12 cardstock for this project. Now, as you can see, the way it's laid out here, uh, it would actually require a uh, full 12 by 12. But what we can do, and I'm going to close my library here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on this whole thing and we're going to break it apart. So after we break it apart, we're going to right click again and hit ungroup. And now you can see that these things are isolated almost. Now, if we move this slightly, you'll see that the score lines don't move along with it. But what we can do is we can take this little tool here, and this is the selection tool. Now, rather than with the standard selection tool, you have to do a box, okay? But sometimes when you do that, it obviously highlights other things. Like in this case, it's highlighting some of these score marks here, which we don't want. But if we use this selection tool, you can actually draw, instead of a, a box, it's a free form selection tool. And now we have just this part selected is not selecting anything over here or over here. And then we can right click and we can group this. And it grouped the score lines with the cut. So that piece is ready to go. Now this one here, you can see it's still not quite together. I'm gonna grab this selection tool and I'm just gonna draw free form around this element. And I can hit group. And there it is, now it's all together. And this piece obviously is just a square so we don't need to do anything special with that. Okay, so now this piece here, we're gonna put that all the way in the corner. We can take, and if we highlight this element and grab the handle and rotate it, and let's see here. So technically, we can fit two of these together. Okay, and here, this one is now ready to be saved, and you can actually cut this on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. So we're gonna to go to File and Export. And I'm just gonna put this on my desktop and I'll call it, we'll call it Tiger Lily One. Save, and now this is gonna be used in Design Space, Cricut Design Space, so you can hit the little checkbox and make it Design Space compatible. And we'll hit OK. So that's one way of isolating and moving things around. Now, another way of doing it, let me open up a new project. Let's grab this piece. These are some of the flower petals. Now, an even faster way, let's say, for example, uh, you cut everything out and you just use a 12 by 12 and that's fine, but one of these, when you were inking it, got messed up and you just need one of them. Uh, another quick way of doing this is by clicking the eraser tool here, and you can change the shape of the eraser tool from a circle to a square up here. Once you have it selected, you can change it here. And then also, you can increase the size of it, okay, or decrease the size of it. So if you need to get more detailed, 
you can make it smaller. But with this, I can go a little bit bigger, save myself some trouble, and it's erasing not only the score marks, but the actual shape itself. And there. Now with this, since we just erased it, it didn't do any breaking apart or ungrouping, so the score marks stay in place, and that's very simply how to isolate an element in a file. So let's do that again here. I'm gonna open up another project. And you know, the reason that the reason that you know sometimes we get emails from people saying that, oh, I wish that you would optimize your space a little bit better. And while that's true, you also have to take into account that we develop our content for more than just one machine. There's a bunch of machines out there and they're not all created equally. And it's very helpful for people that have a older or less capable machine to have a little bit of a buffer and a little bit of space in between some of these elements. Uh, I actually had an email today from someone that needed to isolate these. Now, something like this is very easy to isolate uh, in design space, but, but if you wanted to maximize your paper, I'm gonna show you here real quick. With it selected, we're going to break it apart and now because there's no score lines involved with this, you only have to break it apart once, and then you can literally just take and start nudging things over. Okay, and I'm using the arrows on my keyboard to do that. One other little thing I wanna share with you here is if we go under the settings and go under edit, what I'm doing on the keyboard is technically called a nudge. You can go under your preferences under edit, and you can increase or decrease the amount that each piece moves when you nudge it. Okay, so here is the actual nudge option. And now here is the arrow key increment, which is basically a nudge, but with your arrow key. So I'm gonna increase the value of that. So now when I go here and I hit something on my keyboard, you can see that it moves it a lot more. Now, I kind of like it to where it's a little more exact it doesn't move it as much so I brought it down a little bit and that's a lot better so now I can just move it with my key and I can maximize that space now again if we are wanting to use this on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper I'm gonna get rid of those or maybe I don't have to completely get rid of all of them see how many I can get in here you can see that you have a little ruler here here's your eight and a half by eleven marker Okay, so as long as you get things to fit inside that little area, you should be in good shape. Okay, and I don't think it's going to be possible to fully maximize that sheet of paper. Okay, because, well, yeah, I'm going to delete these. Your 11 is right here, so these pieces are actually slightly beyond it, but we can take this and move it up a little bit and get it in there. Again, getting a little too close for comfort, but if you have one of the newer machines, uh, Cricut Maker, Silhouette 3, 4, 5, I think you're gonna be okay, even though they get rather close. Just make sure that when you're applying your paper to your mat that it's completely flat. I personally would recommend using a brayer just to make sure that it's really making full contact throughout. Okay, and then again, I'm gonna go to File, Export, and we'll call this one Leaves. Save it to the desktop. Make sure that it's Design Space compatible if you're using Cricut Design Space. Let's start a new project, hit Upload, Browse, and Locate on my desktop those two files that I created. Here's Tiger Lily, and we'll upload that. Okay, now you can see here that I actually left the square in here, but if you ungroup it, you can get rid of that. And when I ungroup these, these all stay together because I did group those, because I did group those in shortcuts a lot. So that one came in nicely. And now, and everything's gonna come in automatically at the correct size. So you don't have to worry about that. Now let's bring in the leaves. Okay, upload. There we go. And if I hit make, and I'm gonna change my material size to eight and a half by eleven. Whoops. Well, first off, we need to attach these because we have score marks. So let's do that, and we'll hit Make. Change our paper to eight and a half by 11, and as you can see, everything fits nicely. And we'll set this to eight and a half by 11. 
and you can see it reorganized it and everything will fit on there correctly.